This is the WOKV Ask the Experts Weekend, discussing things that matter most to you. Local experts answering your questions. Call 855-765-1045. That's 855-765-1045. Now, the Consumer Law Hour with Eddie and Chuck Farah. Good afternoon, Jacksonville. My name is Scott Young. I'm here with Eddie Farah, Chuck Farah, and the law offices of Farah and Farah, sponsoring the Consumer Law Hour. Lines are open at 855-765-1045. If you've got questions, Our legal experts are here to help. Give us a call, and we'll be happy to get you on the air and let Eddie and Chuck sort out your issues and give you some good legal guidance. Again, 855-765-1045. Fellas, what's going on? Hey, Scott. Happy to be with you again. We're holding up, Scott. Right on, right on. Yep. uh, Keeping things moving until we get back in the studio. It's been such a weird year, man, and and everybody's having to adapt so many ways of how they're doing business. Now the, uh, the modern business perspective has changed so much in just a couple of months. Who would have ever seen that coming? Yeah. Don't worry. We'll be coming back over there. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. I'm just wishing they would get everything sorted out with uh, a proper vaccination protocols and, uh, getting everything squared away so that we can start getting back into some new routines because, uh, it seems like things keep changing up every couple of weeks. Yeah, and as new information comes around, that's how it's, you know, that's how you got to be. Yeah, I think we're closing I in think on we're, it. I think we're getting close to that vaccine. But um, let's talk about the uh, something we, I think we know something about. It's um, the law. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully uh, get some information. Interesting law just got passed. It's in, uh, Governor DeSantis is going to pass it. Um, since 1829, Scott, Every re- every lease for real estate for a year for more than a year had to be have two witnesses. So a lot of people, and that for, Florida wasn't even a state back in 1829 when this law was first passed. But since 1829 until just right now, any lease for real estate for more than a year had to be signed and witnessed by two people. You know, so a lot of times people would use that technicality to get out of a lease. Because sometimes, you know, the landlord's not thinking about it. Or maybe the business, uh, the owner of the property is not thinking about it. He gets you to sign a lease and he gets somebody that comes up and says, oh, hey, I'll pay you more rent. So he k- kicks to, he tell, he calls up the guy, the dry cleaner who thought he had a lease for the property and says, I'm sorry, buddy, you're out of here. And he goes, wait a minute, I got signed a lease. Yeah. yeah. How many people don't even know that? But you don't have two witnesses. Without two witnesses, until just now, the lease is invalid. So, I mean, you may want to look at your lease because if there's not two witnesses, there's no valid lease. And if, if you got to close your business or move your business, they really can't hold you to the lease on that technicality. Well, because of all that, and the law was just passed this year, and I think Governor DeSantis has, uh, has signed it to where any lease, any lease, for a year, more than a year, less than a year, any any lease for real estate does not require any witnesses. So as long as you sign that lease, you're they're bound to it, both you and the landlord. So oh. that's now in effect. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> so. Well, that's, yeah. But I wonder if that has to do with, you know, a lot of these leases are now e-signed, you know. So, yeah. They sent them. It's all about the technology, getting yeah, well, things done quicker. And yeah, well, now you, you don't have to have any witnesses for the e-sign. You just sign it. I mean, how did you e- witness? You know, an e-sign. Bring them over to your computer, and then they, they sign it. it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't know how it, it was done. Because every lease I signed has been on paper, but. Um, but that is the law now. I think he uh, it went into effect. Uh, maybe July first. If it didn't go into effect July first, or go into effect October, but he signed it June twenty seventh. Yeah. So, uh, and some laws, they, some of these laws go into effect July 1st, some in October. I'm not sure when, but it's, it should be law now. So, so that way that'll simplify things. Cause I'll tell you a lot of times you got to run around and try to find witnesses and all that kind of stuff, yeah. or you don't get a witness. You think you got a lease and you don't have a lease. So that can work for you or against you, depending on the situation, but that will no longer be an excuse. Okay. Moving along. Uh, we talked about, yeah, we've always talked to, you know, we were personal injury lawyers, so that's kind of what we concentrate on. We like to get into other topics, too, because yeah, they're interesting, and uh, the laws change, and uh, a lot of times, even though we don't know the answers, we'll, we can get you some answers. Um, you know, next week, I can call friends of mine who practice other areas, and we can help you out, whether it's real estate, family law, 
um, criminal law, things of that nature, employment law. We've kind of got contacts all over. But what I want to talk about now are trespassers. And um, uh, we've talked about this on the show before, like, you know, what you got to have around your swimming pool to prevent, you know, bad things happening and what the law requires and so forth. But there's an area of the law in Florida called attractive nuisance. And that covers kids that are trespassing. Kids, because of their age, don't cannot appreciate the danger. And what is your responsibility to a kid that comes onto your property if you have an attractive nuisance? And an attractive nuisance is an artificial, something you've created artificially on your property that attracts kids to your property. It could be a swimming pool. I mean, maybe you're digging a new septic tank and you got a pile of dirt there. That's an attractive nuisance. Kids find that interesting. At least I used to. I'd love used to jump on dirt piles and things like that. Um, all kids love that. So attractive nuisance can be virtually anything that's artificially created on your property. And if a child is lured over to you and something bad happens, even though that child is a trespasser, you have liability. And so uh, there is an example. Uh, I mean, so that's something you got to think about whenever you're doing work around the house um, that, if you got construction, I mean, a construction, you could have a ladder. Pile of mulch. Uh, anything, know. anything. It's, I mean, let's say you have, you're have you doing a room. I'm just thinking, you're doing a room addition. you got a ladder up against the house. You know, there's no, you don't remove the ladder. It's just sitting there, I guess it's the weekend, and the contractor's gone, and uh, you're not there. And somebody, some kid walks over, climbs up the ladder, falls off the roof, or falls through the roof, or whatever. That could be considered an attractive nuisance. And you could have liability for that. Trespassing so is not a defense. It's not because of the age of the child. They can't appreciate the danger. Well, let's talk about adults who trespass. Because people generally think, if I've got a trespasser on my property, I don't have any liability to that person. But under Florida law, you do. You have a, even if the person is a trespasser, if there's a hidden danger on your property, and you know there are people coming onto your property and they're around, you have a duty and it's you have a duty to warn even the trespassers of a, a dangerous condition on your property. That you that you know uh, give, probably that you know about. Yeah, yeah. that you know about. That yeah, you, yeah. you know about the danger. Yeah. There's a, you know. And uh, yeah, if you know about it, if, and it, it's a hidden danger, you know about it, but they don't know about right. it. It's not obvious. Does, does that kind of advisory kind of limit your liability in that case you know, then? I mean, if it's open and obvious, it's one thing. You have no duty to warn. But if the danger on your property is a hidden danger, and I'll give me, I'm going to give you an example of a case here in Florida that didn't happen too long ago where a guy, this is on State Road, um, I, think was, I don't know, State Road 40 maybe. I gotta get the, can't find the case right now. Let's see if I can get it. State Road, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's in Florida. Yeah. So this guy, this farmer has a fenced-in property. And what he did, he had people running into his fence, cows getting out. Uh, the fence got knocked down several times. So what he did, he put a bunch of stumps uh, by the fence to stop, you know, in case somebody knocks down the fence so the cows couldn't get out or to prevent people from knocking down the fence. All right, so this guy's driving down the road. He runs a stop sign. He is the at-fault driver. It's at night. Of course, the stumps are not open and obvious. It's at night. They're not lit up. So he runs into the through the fence into the stumps and is seriously injured. Hey, I mean, you would you would think you know, somebody you know, if somebody told you that story. Well, he ran the stop sign. He ran into the stumps. He has no case. I mean, I, it's I his fault. Yeah, you would thinking, think it's reasonable no, to have stumps there. I mean, yeah, you know, protecting I, your I, property. Yeah, this guy I was. I would think in that case it's a matter of play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Exactly. Yeah. Now, come on now. This is not this is not trivial pursuits or anything. Come on. Well, I mean, <laughs> you're still living. In- <laughs> Everything relates back. Everything really. <laughs> come on, man. We'll be at Dos Gatos to meet you. Don't worry. We'll find you there. <laughs> Give me one of those cocktails ready. I need one. But anyway, when so- in doubt, go back to the. But seriously, though, if, no, the no. Guy's, if the guy's driving and he's violated a boundary and um, yeah. something occurs yeah, to him as a result of violating that boundary, he's a- then uh, in, in that particular circumstance, plus with the operation of a motor vehicle you know its responsibility is on him to be a reasonable and, and safe driver wouldn't you th- you're, you're, that's what you think that's what you think but you're not thinking like a lawyer scott you're not thinking that way if you know the law i mean you're thinking like a lawyer but you're not thinking you're not, once you understand the law 
In this case, the court ruled. You got to think like a lawyer who wants to collect some money. Okay, that's what. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Come on. We don't, See, you know. <laughs> I started broke and I still have most of it left. So, <laughs> so anyway, but no, the, the court. <laughs> The court, the court allowed uh, this case to proceed because they said these stumps were. It was at night; they weren't open and obvious. He knew people were going through the fence because the cows were getting out and everything. He had a duty to warn people. Maybe he should have had it lit up so people could see the stumps, or maybe he should have put a sign out there, a lit sign, yeah, some reflector, a, a or reflector, something. or something to let them know that there's yeah, reflectors on the stumps or whatever. So this guy who ran the stop sign ran in through the fence seriously injured on somebody else's property, a trespasser, his case was able to proceed. I don't know what if he collected any money, but instead of being thrown out of court at, because they claimed he was a trespasser, the court said, no, even though he is a trespasser, you owe him a duty to warn of hidden dangers. And if you didn't, you're subject to liability. That's a huge case that, right there. That really so is. You, that, I- that goes Where did that case come out of? It's right here. It's a Florida like case. Like what's part of Florida? This is a Supreme Court ruling, by the way. This is the rule. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a suit. Uh, well, as, it was, as we're talking about uh, nuisances and liabilities, we've got Mitch in Avondale, and he's uh, got a question about the attractive nuisance topic. Okay. Mitch, you're on the Consumer Law Hour. Hey, Mitch. Hey, uh, one time I was going down Adams Street, and I saw this guy standing on top of a smoking car uh, down by <laughs> yeah. Main Street, uh, yeah. and I went, and I got burned from steam. Uh, yeah. Do I have a case? Oh, yeah. Call me on that. I'll help you. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll handle I'll hold that case for you for free, man. <laughs> Go make another commercial. I'll talk to yeah. we, okay. we put We put him through a cognitive test to make sure that he didn't <laughs> fall within that mentality <laughs> to, to create, and to have him weather. sue on an attractive nuisance. So, <laughs> Well, I, I actually have a... Uh, a question about that, but actually something came to my mind when y'all were talking. Are y'all familiar with the movie Fargo and how the plot goes? Yeah. I've never seen uh, that. Uh, how the, the husband kind of hires some guys to kill the wife. Y'all, are y'all familiar with that? No, no. I heard something about it. Like, no. Okay, tell, well, what's the plot saying, line? The guy had, the guy had borrowed uh, or buried some money and a woman from Japan actually came and tried to find the money. But anyway, to, to, to my question, if y'all don't know Fargo, then you don't. Yeah. Okay. I'm coming down the street the other day, and a policeman is really hauling. And this is in a neighborhood. He's probably going 47 to 60. What is the deal with a pine tree and, and uh, you know, uh, bushes and stuff like that with traffic if you have to pull a little bit? further yeah. than what yeah. would be considered the white line. Yeah. And I'll take your hands off your yeah, right. That's a good question. question. You're right. You were pulling over to avoid the police officer who was coming down the road? I, was, uh, I pulled forward just to take a look to see who was coming. Yeah, because he was, he was really blind. going. And I was just like, wow, you know, I really could have got hit. But, of course, you can't collect hardly anything. But I was just wondering, uh, how, how would that go with uh, – a wall like say McDonald's built or who went whoever for pine trees or shrubs that anyone, you know, that yeah. kids could climb or anything else at intersection. And thank you for the show. Well, sure. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Well, I, go ahead, Chuck. No, no. I, I think what he's talking about is having your, your vision obscured by either, you know, trees or shrubs or even a building, you know, at intersections. And, you know, the landowner can be responsible for that. They have to kind of, you know, it's, if it's foreseeable, it, it, you know, they build the building or they plant the shrubs or the trees. They're out there doing that work. It's probably foreseeable that the vision of oncoming vehicles could be obscured. Uh, and, you know, if a collision occurs at the intersection, then that landowner can be responsible. Yeah, yeah but he, he but he has a duty to you to use reasonable care. I mean, when yeah. he pulls over. Um, I mean, he can't, I mean, he, he's got to use due care. He can pull over into the easement area, but I mean, well, I remember I he was talking about hitting like destroying shrubbery or some owned to somebody else. Like he drives onto a piece of somebody's property and mows down a couple of trees well, trying to avoid the police. Yeah. Yeah. Which also prompts the question. What if you drive onto somebody's property and hit the tree? You know, is the tree liable for you hitting it? <laughs> Physics. <laughs> Anyway, don't get us thinking. We've been hosting this show too long. (laughs) 
855 I need to come back in the studio and get you back down to earth, man. We need Scott as a Supreme Court justice. one zero four five. We've got lines open. And we'll be back with more in the second segment of the Consumer Law Hour after these quick messages on 104.5 WOKV, Jacksonville's News and Talk. You've been entertaining your kids all year. How about you let us entertain you? Best of all, teaching math is not involved. The Mark K Show, weekdays from 10 till noon. Taking your calls, playing your open mics, and making you laugh. Weekdays at 10 a.m. on 104.5 WOKV, Jacksonville's News and Talk. This is Eddie Farah of Farah and Farah. Over the years, you've seen and heard a lot from me on TV and radio. And I'm Chuck Farah. You've seen a good deal of me, too. Together, we've been offering valuable information about how you can protect yourself when you've been injured. We've warned you about people who may try to take advantage of you. And we've offered free consultations to answer questions you may have. We hope this information has been helpful because it's been our pleasure bringing it to you for so many years. To offer even more help, our website, fairandfairer.com, has a wealth of practical information about a wide range of situations that may affect you. From automobile accidents and medical malpractice to products liability and nursing home abuse, we've worked hard to give you the facts you need to know if you find yourself in a difficult situation. Whether you hire us someday or not, we think it's important to keep you informed because to us, it's all about helping people. If we can help you, visit fairandfairer.com or call 396-5555 today. Office Jacksonville. Can you fly, Snyderman? I wish. Do you have super strength? I'm above average for my age. X-ray vision? Nah. Then what makes you a superhero? Hmm. Our AC is out. Duty calls, kids. Snyderman saves the day with affordable preventative care plans that keep systems operating at peak efficiency all year long. Get your preferred customer plan at SnyderAC.com today. You're my hero, Snyderman. CAC 1813307. It's Rich Jones. We are deep into wet season. An increase in rain usually means an increase in sod webworm activity. These worms can quickly kill your lawn. You invest too much time to see it die. Treatment involves treating the larva stage of the worms, and then a second treatment is needed to completely kill them because the eggs will continue to hatch. Whether you have concerns about your lawn, termites, or other pests, call the best. Peninsular Pest Control, the award-winning Critter Getters. 389-3491. One, crittergetter.com. I'm here to tell you some great news. You know that new Toyota you have been wanting? It's as good as yours. Thanks to the huge savings happening now at Arlington Toyota. It's Rich Jones, and I'm talking every new Toyota Arlington's got is on sale. You get 0% for 60 months on 10 new Toyota models on Atlantic, just east of the East Beltway. Looking to drive away in a new Toyota with no payments? Sign me up. Right now at Arlington, you can get no payments for 90 days on your new Toyota purchase. Every single day at Arlington. You're going to have over 750 new and quality pre-owned on the lot, ready for you to drive home. With every new vehicle purchased from Arlington, you get a nationwide lifetime warranty with unlimited time and miles. Plus, you can buy with total peace of mind thanks to Arlington's 30-day exchange policy, 30 days to love it or exchange it. Wait no more. It's time to get your new Toyota and save big at Arlington Toyota. 10939 Atlantic Boulevard. Visit arlingtontoyota.com slash August Savings for full details. Over half of all men suffer from ED or PE. Here's a message from Prime Men's Medical Center. Hi, I'm Dr. Rabinsky. If you're not the man you used to be in the bedroom and Viagra, Cialis, or Levitra have let you down, Prime Men's Medical Center offers custom blended medications. Men are lasting 30, 60, 90 minutes or longer, and it's affordable. Call 904-217-5646. See results on your first visit guaranteed or pay nothing. 904-217-5646. Do you keep forgetting your mask every time you leave the house? Dang it, where did I put that thing? Well, that's no problem at Take 5 Oil Change. Because at Take 5, you never leave your car. So it's not the end of the world if you don't have a mask. Ooh, that's a relief. You bet it is. We know new routines are hard, but at Take 5, new routines never felt so normal. In this world of the new normal, we're new normal proof. Just drive in, relax, and we'll take care of the rest. Visit T5Discount.com to get $7 off any oil change at Take 5 Oil Change. 
the WOKV First Alert Forecast. A 7 on the WOKV weather meter for Saturday. Scattered afternoon storms under a mostly cloudy sky, high 89 degrees. A lingering storm tonight, then partly cloudy, low 74. More scattered storms Sunday, partly sunny, high 89 degrees. Keep that umbrella close by if you're out and about during the weekend. Partly cloudy, yet more storms Monday, high 90, 91 on Tuesday. Partly sunny with scattered storms. From the Action News Jack's First Alert Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Corey Sema for 104.5. WOKV. Jacksonville, we're back on the Consumer Law Hour, 855-765-1045, the number to call. A couple of minutes before we have to take a bottom of the hour break, so if you've got a question, now's the time, 855-765-1045 gets you on with our legal experts, Eddie Farah and Chuck Farah from the law offices of Farah and Farah waiting for you. Fellas, let's go. We're back. Um... Have you heard about these lawsuits, about these exploding canisters like these Yeti um, bottle, you know, these Yeti glasses where people are putting like carbonated beverages in them and the heat spill or like hot beverages and they're putting the lid on and the pressure's building up and it's maiming people. Some guy lost his eyes as a result of that. So anyway, there are lawsuits going on. And really what I'm just trying to tell you is be careful if you've got like a Yeti cup or any, any of those types of cups, when you... When you seal it up, when right, you put pressure the, cooker, it's like a pressure cooker. And when you put the heat on there or the carbonated beverages, it sits in the car for a long time. And then it's, it's like, it's like a bomb. I know it sounds kind of silly, but it's happening. And, um, well, anybody who's ever seen the Mentos commercial, what happens when you put a Mentos in a soda? It's, it's a very real thing when you think about how pressure can expand like that. Yeah. And uh, it's happy with these Yeti things that there are some lawsuits going on. Um, with Yeti and o- the Ozark Trails, Thermos, all those companies that make those type of devices and cups, and, and there's some YouTube videos. But um, anyway, there are some lawsuits going on with that, and that's how I learned about it. But be on the watch for that. Um, yeah. Now the and other, they're everywhere. Those Yetis are everywhere. Yeah. And um, although moving on. Uh, we all remember uh, Governor Chris, Charlie Crist. He was a Democrat, but once um, upon a time, yeah, he did. He, he was a Democrat, but he did. And in, in, um, in terms of gun rights, he did as a Democrat. He signed a bill that said that businesses must allow employees with concealed weapon per, concealed weapons permits to keep guns in their cars in company parking lots. So Governor Chris signed this bill that allowed people with a concealed weapons permit to keep a gun with them in the car, you know, while they're at work in the parking lot. Um, So there are exceptions to that. And um, a lot of employers didn't like it because Walt Disney had a policy, no guns at work. If you came to work in the uh, and even if you had a concealed weapons permit, you could not keep your gun in your car. I remember um, a couple of years ago there was some concern about that at uh, on university campuses as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this this law signed by this is for work. This is a workplace. I know what it applies to schools and so forth. This is a the law that the rule the law that Governor Chris signed into effect has to do with workplaces. But Disney World fired a couple because they brought their gun to work and they kept it in their car. They said they brought it to work because they had been a victim of gun of of, of a a road rage attack. So they were concerned about that. So they were worried. So they brought, started, you know, they got a concealed weapons permit. They brought a gun, but they got fired for it. Uh, so anyway, there are exceptions. And one exception, because JEA, I don't know if anybody's listening, it still works. This is a few, couple of years ago. JEA had a no guns at work policy also. And uh, they were not, they were, they got around the law by claiming that, um, the employees who work at JEA have combustible materials and they're conducting activities involving Homeland Security and so forth. And therefore, they're not governed by the law and we can prevent our employees from bringing guns to work even if they have a concealed weapons permit. Disney World got around the law by saying, we have all these fireworks there, therefore you can't bring your gun to work. We're exempt from the law. Universal Studios... Uh, had a sort of a work study program for sort of qualified as a public school. And because it was a school, we could exempt, we were exempted from the law. So I don't know if anybody 
is listening works for JEA and whether JEA has said, no, you can bring a gun to work now or not. But as of, you know, the writing of this article, you could not bring a gun to work if you work for JEA. That's an interesting circumstance. And it raises a question on uh, personal responsibility that we can talk about when we come back. If you have a concealed weapon permit and you keep a, a weapon in your car, uh, is it a smart thing to advertise that to let people know that you have that? And does your employer need to know? We can talk about that when we come back after a quick news and traffic update here on WOKV 104.5 Jacksonville's News and Talk. If news is your thing, you're in the right place. Local, national, breaking, all in the palm of your hand. Download the WOKV app and tap the news feed button. We've got you covered. 104.5 WOKV, Jacksonville's News and Talk. News. I'm Karen McHugh. It's the reason House Speaker Nancy Pelosi called Congress back from its August recess. Today's vote on a $25 billion funding bill for the post office to facilitate mail-in balloting this November. $25 billion just didn't come out of thin air. It came from Trump appointees who said, this is what we need in this pandemic in order to ensure the swift delivery of mail in the United States during this difficult time. Democrat Representative Dan Kildee of Michigan on Fox, but Republican Jim Jordan of Ohio tells Fox that millions voted Voting by mail is just too risky. Do we really want that in the biggest election, a presidential election, with 150 million people potentially voting? The vote is scheduled for late this afternoon. The bill, if passed, would treat mail-in election ballots as first-class mail. America is listening to Fox News. This is 104.5 WOKV, Jacksonville's news and talk. It's time to get back to work, America. Time to get back in the driver's seat and move this country forward. Carver Auto Mall knows America's still driving, and we're helping the hardworking folks of this great country get back to business by offering unprecedented incentives on our all-American lineup of vehicles. Chevy, Buick, GMC, Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. America may have slowed down for a bit, but we'll never stop driving forward. CarverAutomall.com. Carver Auto Mall. All American, all in one place. As a woman, you've spent years taking care of everyone else. When you retire, it's finally your turn. And here's a little secret. Women and men have different needs and different emotions when it comes to retirement. What to do? Listen to Woman's Worth Radio each Sunday at 10 a.m. Woman's Worth founder Jeanette Bajalia believes your retirement isn't just about the money. It's about your total health. Woman's Worth Radio, Sundays at 10 a.m. Hey, it's for us guys, too. Listen to Woman's Worth Radio this Sunday at 10 a.m. Trust is a big issue in selling your home. Am I right? Hi, everybody. It's Brian Kilme for the agent I trust in Jacksonville, Phil Aiken with Aiken Home Team Keller Williams Realty. Jacksonville's real estate authority, you know that. Moving is so stressful and choosing the wrong agent will make it even worse. That's why I strongly recommend you call Phil Aiken. Phil already has the buyers. Thousands of buyers looking to buy today. That's why with Phil, you will sell your home faster, safely, and for more money. Hundreds of families have trusted Phil and his team this past year alone. And while the average agent only sells, I don't know, about three homes a year and make big promises, Phil Aiken guarantees in writing that he will sell your home at your agreed to price or he will buy it himself. It's all about trust. Call my friend Phil Aiken at 904-500-PHIL. That's 904-500-7445. Or visit philhasthebuyers.com. That's philhasthebuyers.com. Are you suffering from shoulder pain? If you have clicking and popping in the shoulder joint, persistent pain that intensifies with use, an inability to lift your arm over your head, or a tingling, burning sensation in the shoulder, elbow, or wrist, waiting to see a doctor could make your injury worse. Baptist Health and Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute have innovative and effective treatment options available right now to relieve your pain and restore your mobility. Don't wait. Call 904-JOI-2000. Hi, my name is Connor. I live at the Rota Heaver Boys Ranch with about 50 other boys. We come to the ranch because we can't live at home or we just don't have one. Rota Heaver Boys Ranch doesn't receive any government support for child care and raises funds by auctioning off donated vehicles every month. If you have a boat, car, motorcycle, RV, truck, or tractor in any condition, Google Boys Ranch Palatka to donate. If you don't have a vehicle, cash donations are accepted. Google Boys Ranch Palatka. Remember, it's better to build boys than to mend men. 
the WOKV First Alert Forecast. Mostly cloudy with scattered afternoon storms on Saturday. That's a 7 on the WOKV weather meter. A lingering storm tonight, then partly cloudy, low 74. Partly sunny on Sunday with scattered storms, high 89 degrees. Partly cloudy Monday, yet more afternoon storms, high 90. The storms stay scattered Tuesday and Wednesday. Highs stay near 90 degrees. From the Action News Jack's First Alert Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Corey Sima for 104.5 WOKV. Now, Safe Touch Security First Alert Traffic. Checking the Jacksonville motorways, and I'm seeing no major incidents to report or major backups or delays to report on. Looks like the incident heading into downtown across the Matthews Bridge has been resolved. Traffic moving smoothly through the area. No delays on the Beltway and no delays to report on Interstate 10 or Interstate 95 as you're making your way through the city. With Jacksonville's most frequent traffic, I'm Scott Young for 104.5 WOKV, Jacksonville's News and Talk. The following hour was paid for by the host and does not reflect the opinion of 104.5 WOKV or Cox Media Group. Jacksonville, we're back on the Consumer Law Hour, 855-765-1045, the number to call. If you've got legal questions, our legal experts are ready to take your call. Eddie Farah, Chuck Farah from the law firm of Farah and Farah waiting for you at 855-765-1045. Now, fellas, in that last segment, we were just talking about uh, uh, concealed carry permits and employers saying you can't keep the, a weapon in your vehicle when it's on company property like that. Uh, is a person with a concealed permit obligated to inform their employer that they have a weapon in their car? No, but or is this just some knucklehead that ran his mouth and, and got himself in trouble for no, it? No, there could be some, well, yeah, maybe they made their uh, employer aware, but let's say there's something in the employee manual that says, well, first of all, the law allows you to do it. For, that's the old law. I mean, that's the old rule. The law is now your employer can't cannot stop you from bringing your gun and keeping it in your car on company property if you have a concealed weapons permit and if the company doesn't fall within one of these exceptions. I mean, there are certain exceptions to that rule or that law. Um, so you don't have to tell the employer because the law says you can bring it. Now, if the employer says we are exempt from the law because like JEA, we have explosive types materials around or like Disney world says we have fireworks a lot of fireworks and we're exempt under the law because something bad could happen with a gun and fireworks, then you may have to re let them know because there may be something in the uh, employee manual that requires you to tell your employer. So you keep your mouth shut, but let's say if it gets out and you get fired. I mean, you got fired, you know, and they, so you may lose benefits. You may lose retirement. You may lose a lot of stuff. I mean, there's a lot at stake financially, you know, so, you know, you ask how they're going to find out. There are ways. I mean, who knows? I mean, it could be a husband and wife. The wife calls in. How many times you, you know, they're going through divorce? And, you know, the wife calls the, the the employer and says, oh, let me. by the way, here's what my husband's doing at work. You know, they rat on each other. How many times have you heard about that, Scott? I didn't hear about that one. No, but I mean, people, it happens. You know, a, a slighted or, a, you know, people go through a divorce and, you know, maybe they have inside information about something that their spouse is doing at work and they call the boss. I mean, this happened. We've had people call us and say, I know I'm going through a divorce. So let me tell you what my husband's been doing. That kind of thing. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I can see where some people yeah. go and then just yeah. generate some mischief like that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you don't. Yes, you say, well, how are they going to find out? There are many ways that they can find out. But right now is if you have a concealed weapons permit, you put it in your car, you can take it to work with you unless you're employer is fits under one of these exceptions and JEA supposedly I, I'm, I just pick out JEA cause that's the one closest to us. Um, and whether they, they still fit under that exception, but anyway, we'll see how that, that goes. But another thing, moving on, uh, let's well, speaking of moving on. We got uh, Joe in orange park. He's okay. got a, a question for us about uh, an accident claim. Uh, Joe, you're on the consumer law hour. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Joe. Hey, um, I was cutting up some limbs in my yard and I had a, my glasses fell off sweating. And as soon as that happened, I had a wood chip hit me and I had excruciating pain. So I went to the emergency room. They assigned an, an eye specialist to me whose office is there in Clay County too. And he couldn't get rid of the pain, 
But he told me I'm not worried about the, the that because it just scratched your lens. Lens, uh, he said, but it looked like you had a stroke like three to six months ago. And I never noticed anything. But anyway, he said your blood vessels grew back in the wrong places and it's taking your eyesight. Now, I can still see. I didn't really have any problem with my vision at all. And I go into his office and sit down. And like 10 minutes later, he comes in, makes me sign a piece of paper, which I don't know. He just said, here, you need to sign this. And then he gives me a shot in my eye where I could see the needle going in. And as soon as he did that, my vision was gone. I went back like a week later. He wouldn't see me. Another doctor came out and said, you're never going to see again. You need to go somewhere else and just brush me off. You know, and I've never sued anybody. And this happened, I guess, December would be like, this coming December would be like two years. But the more and more I ride around with just one eye and having to deal with it, it kind of ticks me off. So I just don't know if I have a case or not. Did he ever explain to you why you lost your eyesight? Nope. I never saw him again. Walked in there in 10 minutes and he charged me $795 for 10 minutes and a shot in my eye that took my eyesight. Did you ever follow up with another doctor to get an opinion? Yeah. I, I went to another doctor and he told me, well, your, your eye, you're never going to get it back. And he said, but I could give you a, a new thing that's going called an absolute vodka block. And he did that on me in late December would be two years ago. And it got rid of the pain and I don't have any pain anymore, but I still just don't have any vision. How long has it been? You said it's been two years ago. How long has it been since you had the shot? December December will be two years. Oh, this December. This December will be two years. Yeah, because you got a two year statute of limitations. I mean, you got a short period of time to do something. Have you, well, Well, I'll tell you. that's the reason I was calling is I was wondering if there was a statute of limitations. There is. If I let it pass or what. It's two years from the date you knew or should have known. So you probably should have known when you lost your eyesight when you had the shot. Um, what kind of document did you sign at the doctor's office? Do you know? I, I don't know. He just told me there was a, a, a 75 to 90% chance that I'd get all my vision back. He didn't ever say at any time that I would lose it. But I really don't know what I signed. I was in really major pain for like two weeks to the point that, you know, I I, I couldn't even see the paper at the time. I mean, you know, you, was so it real? I, I don't know. Did you ever ask? It was like a release of liability or something like that. No, I didn't. I just, you know, I, I just took him. I trusted him as what I did. So I don't know if I made a mistake by that or what. I I don't know. Well, I tell you. Um, why don't you leave your phone number with Scott and I can give you a call next week and we can talk some more about it. Did okay. you, did you ever order your records from your doctor just to have them? No, sir. You never got those. Okay. I mean, I, you know, I've, I've got good vision in one, but you know, the, the longer you look at it and the way I got treated the last time I went in his office, I just, you know, that's bothered me for two years. that Something wasn't right. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, he wouldn't even see me. Another doctor come out and said, you're never going to see again. If you need a glass eye, we'll do that. Wow. You know? And, and, and no, I didn't do that. I never went back. But you could see when you went in there originally for the wood chip experience? Yes. Even with the pain that I had, I could still see. When I sat in the chair, I could actually see that needle going into my eye. What an experience that was. Yeah. So. Okay. You know, well, so I, I don't. You know. Well, Joe, I'll I just you, would like to. Yeah. Just talk to somebody and see what I can do. Sure, I understand that. Um, why don't you leave your uh, phone number with Scott, and um, we'll be in phone contact next week. I can talk about it some Thank more. You, sir. There's some additional Thanks. questions I want to ask you. I still want to ask you over the air like this. Yeah, Joe. If you'll just stay on the line for me, I'll get your information from you in just a moment. Okay. Yep. Wow. So the thing is, some doctors are asking their patients to sign these uh, waivers uh, before they'll be treated. And um, I've seen them. And, um, I mean, you don't, 
I mean, you don't have, the doctor doesn't have, if you don't sign it, the doctor can say, I don't want to treat you. I mean, if it's not an emergency situation, um, the doctors can make that a prerequisite before he sees you or treats you that you sign one of these documents um, limiting their liability. Uh, I don't see him too often, but I have seen him here in Jacksonville. And um, we'll see if that's the situation here. What I want to get into now is uh, let's see, oh, our genetic testing. And um, I know that, I mean, you you can go get these genetic tests now that um, where you can find out if you have a sort of a propensity to develop any type of disease. I mean, there's like a thousand different type of diseases they can test you for. And uh, the fear is that once you have that genetic test performed, that how does that affect your future insurance coverage? Because if you have a propensity to develop a certain type of disease and you go apply for life insurance or health insurance, they can look at that genetic test and say, we don't want to take a chance on this guy. Or when it comes to life insurance or health insurance, they can really raise the rates based on the genetic testing. Even in even in an employment situation, if they have the genetic test, they can say, you know, we don't want, you know, this guy's going to cost our insurance. I mean, if he get he develops this illness, our health insurance rate is going to go sky high because it's going to it's going to cost so much money to, you know, to treat him because of this illness. So, I mean, the, the genetic test is something that really um, can be, if you're depending on the situation, can really affect your employability, can affect your health insurance, your life insurance. Not to so mention forth. your own uh, physical and mental well-being if you're obsessing over some information that you happen to discover from that. Exactly. Uh, you see it yourself. But I'm, I'm looking beyond that. I'm looking from the legal aspects of it. Right. No, you're right, emotionally. I mean, if they tell you you got a propensity to develop A, B, or C, or whatever. Um, but here, under the law, and this is something that President Bush, the last Bush, uh, filed, uh, signed, was the law. It's called the, um, uh, what is it? It's just a law that deals with genetic testing that you can't discuss. The Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act. Under this act, the law prohibits employers from firing, refusing to hire, or otherwise discriminating against workers on the basis of genetic information. It also states that health insurance companies and group health plans may not use genetic information to, ter- to determine plan eligibility or premium rates. So under this act signed by President Bush, they cannot use the genetic information to, you know, determine how much you're going to pay for health insurance. Your employer can't use it. Now, the health insurance companies can still use all your, you know, your pre-existing illnesses and what you're dealing with, you know, right now to determine your premium, but they can't use the genetic testing to do it. So that's probably a pretty good law to have in effect because that would, you know, that would open up a lot of different. Now, I don't know, you know, they say they can't use it, but who knows if they're using it or not? Who knows if they get a hold of it, what they do with it? But that's the law as it is right now throughout the country. The... Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, which I had never heard of before. And we'll fire that under the Today I Learn topic for uh, today's edition of the Consumer Law Hour. One more segment to go after another quick break. You're listening to the Consumer Law Hour on 104.5 WOKV, Jacksonville's News and Talk. We tell you the three big things you need to know every 15 minutes all day. All day. And when you're not listening to the radio, get them on WOKV.com or in the WOKV app. The three big things you need to know. Powered by Safe Tough Security. 104.5 WOKV. Jacksonville's News and Talk. Hello, I'm Eddie Farah. After more than 35 years of practice, there are some things I've learned about our profession that are absolutely crucial to personal injury law. We deal with serious, often permanent, life-changing injuries. And of course, we deal with real tragedy and families that have just lost a family member through the carelessness of another party. Over the years, this is what has really shaped our culture of empathy, compassion, and respect for every person who comes in for a consultation. They come in feeling like they have no power. They feel alone. We start out by explaining what the law provides, like lost wages and future medical payments. You can see the change in a client when they start to realize that they're not alone. They have power. Their story will be heard. Their quality of life and their dignity can be restored. 
our philosophy of compassion and respect is something you'll feel because it's not just a philosophy. It's who we are. Farah and Farah, protecting you and your family. Call us at 396-5555. Jacksonville. It's Rich Jones. We are deep into wet season. An increase in rain usually means an increase in sod webworm activity. These worms can quickly kill your lawn. You invest too much time to see it die. Treatment involves treating the larva stage of the worms, and then a second treatment is needed to completely kill them because the eggs will continue to hatch. Whether you have concerns about your lawn, termites, or other pests, call the best. Peninsular Pest Control, the award-winning Critter Getters. 389-3491, crittergetter.com. Jay Farner here, CEO of Rocket Mortgage. Making the right financial decisions has never been more important. When you turn to Rocket Mortgage, we can help guide you to those right decisions now when they matter most. Mortgage rates are near historic lows, so now is a great time to call 8338-ROCKET. And if you need some extra money, a cash-out refinance could give you that financial boost you're looking for. Call today at 8338-ROCKET or go to rocketmortgage.com to learn more. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. And MLS number 3030. Hey, whether you're working from home or working on your fitness, you need a pair of premium wireless earbuds. Raycon, by the way, is the way to go. Now, Raycon start about half the price of other premium brands on the market, and the sound is just amazing. Their everyday E25 earbuds are the best model yet with six hours of playtime, more bass, and a comfortable noise-isolating fit that you can rock all day to. Just get 15% off your order by Raycon.com slash Hannity. Businesses are starting to bounce back. But what if you could do better than that? What if you could adapt, deliver, and succeed in new ways with new customers? At Comcast Business, we're committed to helping you not just bounce back, but bounce forward. That's why we're offering powerful and reliable internet and voice. Now for only $35 each a month when you buy both and sign up for EcoBill and AutoPay with a two-year agreement. It'll help you stay ahead with a network you can count on. Stay connected with 24-7 support and thrive with flexible solutions that work wherever you are. Call 1-800-501-6000 or go online today to find out more. Comcast Business. Offer ends 9-21-2020. Restrictions apply. Limited to new Comcast Business 35 megabits internet and one voice mobility customers. Early termination fee applies. Equipment, installation, taxes, and fees extra. Subject to change. I'm Larry Birkins from Birkin Chevrolet and McClenny. And no matter what you're looking for, Birkin Chevy either has it or can get it. Whether you need a truck, SUV, or fuel-efficient family vehicle, come on. We would like to invite you to experience our world-class service before, during, and after the sale. So whether you're from GA or FLA, you should be driving a Birkin Chevrolet. Call, click, or stop by Highway 90 in the heart of McClenny or BirkinChevy.com. Chevy, buy new roads. Come on. The WOKV First Alert Forecast. A 7 on the WOKV weather meter for Saturday. Scattered afternoon storms under a mostly cloudy sky. High 89 degrees. A lingering storm tonight, then partly cloudy. Low 74. More scattered storms Sunday. Partly sunny. High 89 degrees. Keep that umbrella close by if you're out and about during the weekend. Partly cloudy, yet more storms Monday. High 90. 91 on Tuesday. Partly sunny with scattered storms. From the Action News Jack's First Alert Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Corey Sema for 104.5. WOKV. Your hurricane prep kit or evacuation plan may look a bit different this year. The WOKV Hurricane Guide is your one-stop resource for all things 2020 hurricane season. Brought to you by Clay Electric Co-op and Big Fish Roofing. Check it out now on WOKV.com or the free WOKV app. We're back for the final segment of the Consumer Law Hour, 855-765-1045. The topic to call. 855-765-1045, the number to call. If you've got a topic, we've got the legal experts to talk to you. Eddie Farrah, Chuck Farrah waiting on your calls. Again, 855-765-1045. Fellas, we're back. What else is going on? Well, um, Dollar General stores is going on right now. And, you know, their business is going through the roof. I think their stock price is up 23% because people are using them a lot now. Dollar General and those types of places. But the um, unfortunate thing is these places are becoming robbery magnets because they do a lot of cash. Unlike most other, you know, stores, big box stores, Dollar General gets a lot of cash in. So they're, you know, they're, they're a target. 
interesting case happened out of uh, a Dollar General store where one of the employees had been robbed three or four times. He kept asking for security from Dollar General. They gave him some training and they kept promising security. So, but nothing ever happens. So he's robbed three times. So he, the guy gets nervous. So he brings a gun to work, keeps it with him. The fourth time, he gets, here it is, the fourth time, the guy comes in, a robber comes in with a gun, demands money from the cash register. This employee pulls out his firearm and kills the robber. Um, no charges are, are uh, filed against the employee because I guess he was defending himself and defending his prop- the property. But he gets fired from Dollar General because Dollar, Dollar General has a policy that you can't bring guns to work. So here was a guy that was protecting himself, kind of trying to make do with what he could because Dollar General was not stepping up to the plate and providing security at that store, which had been robbed three times before this. And um, he was fired for it. I think that's kind of ridiculous, but he was. (laughs) So this is a strange plot twist. You you do everything right and you still get burned for it. Yeah. Well, here's another thing. In Florida, there was a case that came out of... uh, this one out of, it's a Scambia County out near Pensacola where um, a man and a wife get married. They have a ceremony, the whole, they go through the whole thing, it's big wedding, big reception, a lot of people. And they had gone to the clerk's office. They obtained the marriage license. They got it. They had it in their possession. Um, and, but they never returned it to the clerk's office. It was never returned. They got the license. They got approved for the wedding and everything. But under Florida law, if you don't return the license back to the clerk's office where it can be filed, it's an invalid marriage. And what happened here, things went south after the wedding a few years, and, you know, somebody filed for a divorce. And since the clerk, you, their license was never returned to the clerk's office, there was never a marriage. There was never a valid marriage. Even they had gone through a church ceremony, the preacher was there, reception, everything. Um, so Leave a loophole. Yeah. Yeah. So Woo, that can be, you can everybody be, goes around. You can be very, I, I'm just looking, thinking it through. The husband says, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was they, a close call, the, man. The husband takes the wife to the to the clerk's office. They get the license. Everything's signed. They, but the husband says, I'll take it tomorrow. I'll take it back tomorrow. And he never takes it back. He puts it in the glove box. Well, yeah. And things go south. And, uh, you know, sure. like, yeah, Ooh. here's the law. Think about all the property stuff that he just spared himself arguments over down the line. Oh, this he's he's a happy camper. I, this I guy. I'm, I'm not sure if that's a win or a lose situation. <laughs> all I can say is well played. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that brings us to the it's end of the legal loophole the there. Law Hour. Eddie, Chuck, as always, thank we'll you so you much next for week. your continued yeah. support. Fellas. Thanks, Scott. Looking forward to talking to you again next week. Guys, stay tuned. More of your Experts Weekend continues on 104.5 WOKV, Jacksonville's News and Talk.